In this video, I'm going to demonstrate my approach to making a portrait in watercolour. For me, an important fact is that the portrait must be recognisably a representation of the subject, recognised by third parties, and ideally the subject themselves. This means that I need to start off with a carefully prepared drawing that has established the likeness to a level that meets my satisfaction and from which I can then start to think about the complexities of applying watercolour washers. I mark up the paper in two squares that are replicated on either the screen, if I'm using a computer screen to draw and paint from, or on the paper reference that I will have prepared earlier. This then represents a matrix from which I can commence a detailed pencil drawing. I draw using a 0.5 millimeter propelling drafting pencil with 2B soft leads. This allows me to make erasures without damaging the surface of the watercolour paper. For erasures, I use a soft, kneadable rubber. Achieving a likeness can be disrupted and made difficult by even relatively small errors in drafting. And for this reason, I spend a lot of time making and checking measurements so that eyes are the correct distance apart and the right size and the right distance from the nose and the mouth and so on. So this is the completed pencil drawing ready to commence the watercolour phase. I first of all give the background area a coat of clear water. I work carefully to the outline of the portrait head using the point of the big brush carefully to keep within the margins of the required area. Once the background is satisfactorily damp, I then commence applying the paint in a broad wash, starting at the top of the paper and bringing the bead of paint down the board. I work with a large size brush because this allows a lot of pigment to be placed on the paper quickly. And I then get the required even tone in this background wash. The brush is a size 20 synthetic bristle brush of a quality that allows a fine point to be achieved, which is useful for working around small details. In fact, the entire painting will be ultimately completed by using this and just another three brushes. I commence work on the flesh tones by first mixing a base wash comprising of cadmium red, yellow ochre and a touch of cerulean blue. I work this base tone over all the flesh areas of the subject, including the mouth, but accepting the eyes, which I work around carefully. I apply this base mix to all the flesh areas, including the lips. Whilst this mix is still damp, I drop in the shadow area with a mixture of permanent alizarin 
and ultramarine blue. I don't want a hard line, so I wash in some clear water to blur the edge of the shadow area. I turn my attention to the eyes to paint the whites of the eyes. The whites of eyes are never in fact white and on this occasion I mix a pale wash of cerulean blue and drift this into the eye areas. At this stage a stronger flesh tone has been used to commence modelling the features of the face, the cheeks and the side of the nose. Also, the hair has been painted initially with an overall wash of weak yellow ochre, followed after that wash was dried with details in a mixture of yellow ochre with a touch of burnt sienna. It's now time to start strengthening the various tones, starting with the shadow area on the subject's left hand side. This is again a mix of permanent alizarin and ultramarine blue. Again careful observation is made to render the shape of the features accurately.
as always, the edge boundary is softened with some fresh, clean water. Careful observation is required to define shapes around the chin and mouth. More pigment is now added to the base mix to commence the painting of cheeks and mouth. This is checked against the reference material for the study. At first the application of this tone looks rather radical but remember that watercolour always dries lighter and the edges will be softened with clean water. The stronger tones are now used to model details such as the ears. Now is the time to start adding more strength to the colours of the lips. By and large, lips are best dealt with with variations, slight variations on the base flesh tone.
At this point the eyes have been painted in and painting of the clothing is commenced. Paying particular attention to the shadows that define the shapes around the neck. A few light touches complete the detailing on the clothing. A final layer of tone is added to further enhance the modelling of the subject's ears. A paintbrush known as a rigger is used to provide wee details on the buttons of the clothing. And here is the completed portrait.